Hello, I'm a concerned American citizen who is deeply troubled about the future of our representative republic. Our country is in the most divisive and destructive state of social and political disagreement since the Civil War, with no positive outcome in sight. Over my long career, I learned two fundamental rules of creating positive outcomes to seemingly unsolvable problems. The first was learned from my being a part of the Apollo 13 team at Mission Control in Houston. Failure is not an option. The second is that if you're going to express your opinions or disagreements, you're ethically bound to propose a rational solution to the issue. This presentation is a call to action to consider a viable solution to our most serious national, social, and business problems. I must stress up front, this is not a political opinion piece. It's a call for reason, dialogue, and consensus building. It makes the case that doing the same thing over and over, expecting different results, is truly the definition of insanity. I've been intently following the three branches of government since the 1960s. The legislature has continually declined in effectiveness to where it has experienced single-digit approval ratings. They have effectively made the transition from representing the needs of their constituents to serving the needs of special interests. Congress has also allowed the creation of lifetime politicians whose power is nearly absolute. There are individuals and committees that can force questionable legislation loaded with pork through both houses to passage. Conversely, they can stop other legislation from ever being brought to the floor of the House or the Senate, regardless of its merits. The healthy differences between liberal and conservative beliefs have morphed into divisiveness and absolute intolerance of opposing viewpoints. The executive branch has a history of moments of greatness and periods of inaction and defeat. As that office periodically changes parties, most presidents have made it their mission to undo the policies of the previous administration. The platforms they ran on and the promises they made become fading memories as the term progresses. Presidential actions and national and international crises and disasters have run the gamut from decisive and conclusive to misguided and ineffective. Respect from other global leaders has been manifest in esteem, fear, but also intimidation, subterfuge, and aggression. The judiciary has transitioned from interpreting and applying the law to legislating from the bench. The various circuit courts could post signs that label them as liberal or conservative by the history of their rulings. There have been superb justices of the Supreme Court who uphold the Constitution as the rule of law, and there have been a few whose opinions and rulings follow political tides. We now have compelling evidence that our federal law enforcement agencies are engaging in weaponizing politics. On the record statements by senior members of the FBI and DOJ about political issues is without precedent and clearly salacious. The Founding Fathers are turning over in their graves. The theme of this presentation is not to relive history, only to learn from it and find a path to peace and prosperity for all. Every form of government has collapsed at one time or another. Isn't it rational to learn from the triumphs and tragedies of others and structure our system of governance to avoid a pending civil war? One of our most precious liberties is the right of free speech. Somehow that right has been transformed from expressing opposing views, reaching consensus, and effecting positive change to inciting civil unrest and violence. It appears to be an evolving radical free speech. Radical anything is doomed to failure. Hate, vitriol, unfounded accusations, intolerance, violence, and anarchy have never fixed any problems. There have historically been extremely divisive debates and disharmony between the legislative and executive branches. The public has also traditionally been outspoken and highly polarized in their political views and opinions. Never 
In my lifetime, however, have I seen so many people be so vehemently disrespectful and slander their elected officials. When did it become acceptable to publicly humiliate and threaten bodily harm to individuals have opposing views? Aren't death threats to public officials criminal acts? I'm not certain when the term compromise became the underpinning of our legislative process. The dictionary definitions of compromise make the process foundationally flawed. As I look through the, the different definitions, the one that is most egregious to me is the last one, that is the acceptance of standards that are lower than is desirable. The title of bills introduced in either house typically have a very compelling premise to right or wrong or create a more robust country. Unfortunately, the compromise process turns the bills into an unholy collection of unrelated pork. For the bills to stand a chance of getting out of committee, to the floors for debate, to the process of drafting a joint bill, to signature by the president, they must contain special interest content that leads to concessions, compromises, and standards that are lower than desirable. In my career, working with more than 700 companies and scores of association, compromises in any activity almost always lead to subterfuge by those who make the deepest concessions. They agree to go along with the decision or policy, but they are looking for any opportunity to find flaws in the plan and to point them out to the decision makers. Those who prevailed often go out of their way to make dissenters look like fools for opposing their platform. Compromise is one of the most destructive processes in history. It's right up there with ruthless dictatorial governments and fascism. It's insanity to continue the attempt to govern by compromise. There are precious few leaders and strategic thinkers who have taken the risk of embracing genuine dialogue and consensus building to achieve positive outcomes. I call it a risk because the enlightened know you must give respect and power to those with whom they seek to work and for them to collaborate with. The synonyms for consensus are agreement, harmony, concurrence, accord, unity, unanimity, and solidarity. Quite a stark contrast to the definition of compromise. Genuine dialogue is a learned process of giving respect, being present, confirming that you hear the other person, and candor. The only way an assembly of individuals can reach most effective outcomes is to confine their conduct and discussions to these principles. It's desirable to have differing views of opinion and data in such a confab. It's also mandatory to have verified facts about views and opinions expressed. It's critical to have free speech regardless of the members' origins or backgrounds. Titles and positions should not be deciding factors in genuine dialogue. The foundation of the Genuine Dialogue movement consists of each member of the team presenting their data, i.e. facts, and their opinions. The members then debate the merits and risks of each proposal. Through dialogue and strategic thinking, politics and personal biases are set aside as a single plan with measurable outcomes and milestones is crafted. Once consensus is reached and measurable outcomes, milestones, and metrics are agreed upon, the final plan is drafted, and each member must ethically agree to aggressively support the plan or remove themselves from the team. As the plan, bill, procedure, process, activity, whatever it's called, is implemented, the milestones and metrics are continually monitored for effectiveness. If needed, the team is reconvened to modify the plan as situations change and as data shows the need for revisions. The process of consensus building is elegantly simple. Implementation, however, requires us to revisit our desired outcomes for ourselves, our family, our organizations, and our governing bodies. Those who are inflexibly opinionated, combative, intolerant, disrespectful, vindictive, hateful, and those who demonize the differing opinions will never embrace consensus thinking to affect positive and effective change. 
I offer the proposition of launching the genuine dialogue movement so that we can survive as a country and as human beings. I truly fear that my grandchildren and great-grandchildren will see the haters and iconoclasts spawn a civil war. This time, it will be with automatic weapons and social media. While Atlas Shrugged and Soylent Green are works of fiction, their respective themes are closer to becoming reality than anyone would dare to predict. The Constitution establishes the rule of law. We need to make it cool to play by the rules.